There's a point in every SRE or platform engineer's journey when you try to shrink down Kubernetes. At some point, Kubernetes is more than just this large scale system for high availability. It becomes the interface for all your applications. And so you try to make it as small as possible so you can do things like develop with it and run it locally and to test changes. All of those things don't need large scale systems, you need it to be small. There's a rite of passage for every engineer when you try to put it on a Raspberry Pi. You say, hey, if I can get a Raspberry Pi to run Kubernetes, I can get it to run anywhere. But what actually is the smallest possible Kubernetes that you could run on multiple systems? This isn't looking at development systems like Kind or Minikube, but instead, what's the smallest possible Kubernetes that you actually might wanna be on call for? And most people immediately just think K3S. I should just go with K3S because it's the small single binary solution, right? Where is the data on how much it actually uses? Because a Kubernetes distribution runs on a Linux distribution and both those things together will consume some amount of resources. So we're gonna look at the smallest Kubernetes options that I could find and see how they compare to each other. Of course, you're watching this on the Sidero channel, so we're looking at Talos Linux for this, but we're also looking at K3S, K0S, RKE2, KubeADM, Kairos, and Canonical Kubernetes. I also only wanted to look at options that would give me high available control plane. So this eliminated anything that was meant to run in a development environment on a single node. There are some situations where something like K3S can be used with distributed SQLite, but I wanted to look at like the full picture of what does an actual etcd database look like on these, these single binary Kubernetes clusters. I did look at a new project called Cube Solo, which also fits this bill. And to me, that one actually scaled the smallest out of all of these solutions by far, but it is designed only for a single node Kubernetes cluster. So if that's all you need and you really are trying to squeeze every last compute cycle out of your cluster, look at Cube Solo because that one eliminates things like the scheduler. You don't need a scheduler if it's a single node, you just need to run the process. So there's a bunch of things, trade-offs that Cube Solo Solo made to make this fit a very small footprint on a single node that wasn't the goal of this testing. So again, I'm looking at only solutions that can scale up to multiple workers, multiple etcd endpoints, and also gives me a full Kubernetes experience. I wrote up all these results in a blog post, so you can go read it if you don't wanna watch this video. Uh, we'll talk about some things as I go through the results, but all the data's there. If you wanna repeat any of this, I'll also have a GitHub link that has the Grafana dashboard that I'm using to get all these metrics. So to get started, let's just look at the setup I have. I have KVM running on my host with a bunch of VMs. Each of these VMs is set up identically with the same amount of CPU and memory and disk size. And for most of them, I installed Ubuntu 2404 once, and then I just cloned the volume multiple times and installed each distribution on top of it. The only time that I did it differently was with Talos Linux, which obviously is a Linux distribution and Kubernetes in one. So I just installed that from scratch on the same type of volume. Same thing with Kairos. Kairos is a, a bundling of distribution and a version or flavor of Kubernetes distribution. So I found a, a similar to what the other ones had. I found an Ubuntu 2404 base with K3S. Once I had Kubernetes installed on each of those VMs, I installed the Prometheus node exporter, and then I ran Prometheus on my machine and set each one as an endpoint. I just configured it to say each IP address is a different endpoint, and I labeled some nice host names here so I could see which one I'm filtering on in the Grafana dashboards. And then I looked at a bunch of different Grafana charts to visualize this data and to see what actually was important. So I was looking at a bunch of different graphs, looking at what metrics I had, and I kind of rolled it up into five different metrics. The metrics that I kind of thought were the most important for what it means to be smallest. And this is just resource consumption on a machine, whether that's a Raspberry Pi, a virtual server, whatever the case may be, what does smallest mean here is always gonna depend on what you're looking at. And those metrics are the CPU utilization, the total memory usage, disk IO, and that's just a combination of read and write, network IO, which is also similar of just bytes in and out, and then disk install size on how much data did it actually consume to install the thing on a disk. All of the clusters ran at idle essentially for a long period of time. I just let them collect data, no work, no other workloads outside of the defaults were running on them. And I just let them consume whatever resources they were going to and let it run, collect the data, and then started charting it. The only difference I made on any of the installations was any of the K3S based Kubernetes distributions. I set the flag to make them run the embedded etcd server instead of using SQLite because that's the easiest way you get a multi-node 
control plane is by running etcd. Again, you can do the SQLite replication and do different things there, but I didn't want to mess with that. I just wanted them to be as consistent as possible. And with the Talos installation, I disabled the local dashboard. So if you go look at the actual console, it usually displays a dashboard, which is like SSHing to a system and running HTOP. It consumes some resources because it's constantly checking all the metrics and reading proc. Outside of those two changes, I kept everything as default as possible. So let's run through them and start with kubeadm. I gave myself a nice switcher here in the graph so I could select one of the installations and filter all of the charts based just on that. Now this top graph here gives me a average over whatever time period I selected. So this is the last hour of time. This is how much total disk install it takes. Network IO, disk IO, CPU average and memory usage. And it's pretty good here. This is this is great. This is our baseline because kubeadm is typically the like most ideal way you can install a full version of Kubernetes. This is the tool that the documentation recommends and this is what it looks like running on top of Ubuntu. I'm not going to spend too much time on showing off each one of these graphs because uh, they all the summaries kind of show the average usage over time. Uh, most of these just look like a normal graph would, especially if it's averaging out to something. So CPU usage somewhere around that 3%. Memory usage is really stable. I get these weird spikes uh, with network usage uh, received and sent. I don't know why that's happening. And I actually found this really fascinating thing that maybe someone can can inform me on why it might happen, but the pattern actually repeated on multiple nodes at once. And so if I zoomed in here, and again, uh, this has nothing to do with any of these, all of these have this weird dip at the same time. Uh, and then they spiked up around the same time. It's proportional to what they were using. I'm assuming that's because I'm running it on a host system that has uh, some sort of input output, even though the scraping should be happening for this one particular node. So not all of them followed it. You can see these weird spikes uh, on some nodes. I don't know what they're doing. I didn't dig into it. I just wanted to see what is a common usage pattern for any of these at idle over time. So that showed us kubeadm real quick, and let's just look at Talos. Talos is the next one we wanted to look into, and it was the one that I was suspecting that combined with a minimal Linux distribution and a Kubernetes, a vanilla Kubernetes, we would get the lowest usage out of it, uh, just because that's what I typically see when I do these installs. And it does show out where our memory usage is lower than anything else, our disk read write is lower than anything else, and our disk install is lower than anything else. Um, these were the best stats on those three things than any other option that we looked at. Uh, the network IO and CPU usage was slightly higher. If we look at uh, if we look at them compared down here, you will see that Talos is, is kind of in the middle range there, where some of these K3S options are, are lower in CPU usage, kubeadm, rke2, and canonical are all higher, and Talos is in the middle there of CPU usage. And network usage, uh, again, is this is all minimal for all of these things. These are all very tiny, running at a uh, on a minimal footprint. As soon as you start making any kubeadm calls, or if you SSH into any of these nodes, do an apt install, you will see this number shoot through the roof. Uh, because if you're doing any sort of work on them that is doing network traffic, that's where you're really going to see this. If you have high available etcd nodes, you're going to be replicating data between the two and making sure snapshots and, and health checks are accurate all of these numbers are going to go up. But in general, on the baseline, they are all really good. And for network IO, they're all pretty consistent across the board. Comparing this to K3S, which is the typical smallest Kubernetes you can get, right? How does that actually look compared to Talos Linux? And again, this is running on Ubuntu, where our memory usage is over a gig. Our CPU usage is lower uh, than Talos and and lower than uh, kubeadm and pretty equal with something like a K0S. Our disk install is is almost three times as much and our disk read write bytes is almost three times as much as Talos Linux. Again, I didn't look into why. I'm just doing the defaults here and seeing how they compare with these defaults. Uh, I suspect that this is doing some sort of uh, journal logging, snapshotting, and also uh, the etcd writes are causing this, but Talos has the same etcd writes uh, and same sort of logging going on, so I don't know what actually would be causing this. 
And it was also really confusing to me that K3S is a single binary Kubernetes distribution, but it actually installs a bunch of binaries across your system. There was CNI plugins, there was kube control, there was a bunch of stuff that get installed on the system, even if my initialization script for run a K3S server is a single binary. So you do need to manage where those things are installed, how you're doing upgrades, and traditionally all of these are managed with a bash script. It's just installing and writing this, automating it to say, okay, we're going to replace some files, we're going to restart some services. When I compare K3S and K0S, almost all of the stats are the same. And these would also fluctuate over time. If I took it this hour and looked at the hour yesterday, they would swap. It doesn't really matter. In either of these cases, they're basically using the same amount of resources across the board. So I'm not sure if K0S claims to be a smaller version of K3S or what the claims are around that. I'm just looking at the data from a default installation and both of them look identical to me. Now Kairos was a little bit of a different story and I used the Ubuntu flavor with a K3S version of Kairos, which was again, super confusing to me. There was over 300 options of what Kairos I wanted to have installed. And I just picked the one that looked the closest. Uh, but Kairos had a similar CPU and memory usage. It would kind of fluctuate again. It had almost half of the disk rewrite. And I'm assuming that's because they actually mount a bunch of file systems in place that are RAM disks and they mount things around to make it more immutable. Uh, but at the same time, I was able to SSH in and change a bunch of files like systemd unit files and, and it worked just fine. So I'm not sure which portions of this are immutable, which ones aren't, uh, but Kairos consistently had lower disk IO, higher network IO, and the, the disk usage, the total disk usage was always incorrect. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to properly do that except for to actually SSH the system and run DF on only certain partitions that I knew were part of the VDA disk volume. In reality, Kairos actually does consume about six gigs of memory installed as well, which again, makes sense. It's Ubuntu with K3S, uh, but the stats on it were completely off. Where this started to get interesting was actually with something like RKE2. RKE2 is the first distribution I tested besides Talos and KubeADM that actually runs a separate etcd process. And running that separate etcd process has pros and cons. It is something else to manage, but it's also something else that's easier to debug. And if you want to separate it out to another server, it's easier to move. And if you wanted to decouple it, if you have a bug with etcd or something, with the K3S based distributions, it's bundled together using the embedded etcd. So if you want to run a separate etcd, there's steps on how to do that. I didn't do that in this testing, but RKE2 does do that by default, same with Talos Linux. So ideally, Talos and RKE2 are gonna be the most similar in resource utilization. But when I look at both of them together, Talos is almost half of all of the RKE2 resources across the board. Uh, it's a, a little more than half here on memory usage, less than half on memory, like a fifth of the disk read writes. Um, it is a little bit higher on the network utilization, but like I said, all of them are doing the same thing there. Uh, when you do an upgrade of the system, Talos is much, much smaller because the disk, the whole file system of Talos is less than 100 megs versus something like Ubuntu that you're gonna be downloading gigs and gigs of data to be able to download that. So over time, uh, these numbers are definitely not gonna be the same. And then the total disk usage is a third of what RKE2 had. Uh, just using, again, just using Ubuntu. And the same Ubuntu image, RKE2 downloaded a bunch of extra stuff. I've also seen on the SUSE website and material that they usually recommend RKE2 for a more production or data center deployments. So that is more of a, like a larger system, not necessarily single node, where these other K3S, K0S are kind of focused at that single node option with some option to scale. Talos does either. Talos will scale up to large data centers and large clusters and down to single node clusters. The last one that I looked at was the canonical Kubernetes and this one always had a higher CPU, a lot more memory, and a ton more disk read writes. The thing I found fascinating about canonical Kates is just that it almost almost always lower on the network bandwidth. It was always using a small amount of network bandwidth and a trade-off of using a ton of disk writes. 
like just look at this pattern of disk writes on the system where I'm assuming this is flushing to disk. It's probably like journal D or something doing these uh, writes constantly. I don't know what it is, but it's every five minutes like clockwork. It just spikes by a hundred or so kilobytes and, and then stops and goes down again. Everything else about the system seemed pretty stable. Even the load wasn't, you know, very crazy. Uh, I would just get these random spikes in disk usage. Um, sometimes they'd correlate to network uh, read write, but not always. Metric usage is just one story of how small a Kubernetes distribution can be. The main thing that we like to talk about is how much time it takes to manage, because once you have it set up, you have to manage it forever. And there's a reason people don't run kubeadm, at least don't usually run kubeadm in production, because kubeadm doesn't help you manage it in any way. It helps you set it up, it helps you play with some things, but the migration story of upgrading one version to another, maintaining it, making sure all the binaries and plugins and everything else, they're all in sync, that becomes super difficult, which is why most people aren't looking at kubeadm just to reduce their footprint. And that was a big selling point for something like K3S, where you look at K3S and you say, oh cool, this is all built into a single command I'm starting and stopping, but it doesn't take the whole picture into how you're managing your Linux distribution too. You're always duplicating efforts between I need to set up SSH keys and users and services and all the logging, all this stuff in the Linux distribution that you have to go find all these places that you're configuring it. You have to do those upgrades. And then when you're rolling out new versions of the OS, you have to test all of your Kubernetes configuration on top of that. Talos collapses all of that stuff into a single API. Talos is just one API for the entire machine, the Linux installation, the disk partitioning, and the Kubernetes setup. And it's the only one that has all of that in a single place. So when you're doing upgrades and doing maintenance, you're also getting just a simpler way to manage the system. And all of the Kubernetes compatibility and settings that you might need are built into the OS. You're not configuring it from a general purpose Linux distribution or even a minimized container focused operating system. Talos is only for Kubernetes. It doesn't do anything else. It's going to save you more time than anyone else. It also happens to save you more resources. So the next time you look for something that is the smallest Kubernetes, ask yourself what trade-offs you're looking for. How are you actually going to manage the full system and not just the Kubernetes binaries on top? Adding one binary on top of an operating system that has over 2,000 binaries doesn't matter that much. Talos Linux has less than 50 binaries on the entire system, and you're not adding anything specific because it only runs Kubernetes. You tell it create a cluster and it knows how to. And if you don't believe me, give it a try. Please try it yourself. Run your own VMs. See how it actually works in your environment on your hardware or in your VMs. I have all of the Grafana graphs available, so all you need to do is deploy the node exporter and give it a try, see how it works for you, and see how management looks for upgrading the OS and the Kubernetes versions. See how long that takes. Making the smallest Linux distribution for Kubernetes isn't just about making a single binary. It is about removing things that don't need to exist. And that is the whole reason that Talos was made, to remove the layers and pieces that aren't needed to run a Kubernetes cluster anywhere. Thanks everyone for watching. Please leave a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll talk to you again soon.